Welcome back to Probing Paul. This is my Q&A series where I answer the questions that you guys have asked in the last Probing Paul, which you leave in the comments section down below. Today I'm going to be talking about a bunch of different things. I'll talk about my favorite fan or fans, whatever those might be. And then everyone asked like all these like serious, heartfelt, deep questions in the last episode. So, so I'm going to answer some of those too. Excellent. We begin, as always, with a look back at past probing Pauls. As you can see, I've been probed many times now, and I still keep coming back for more. So again, if you have questions for me for next time, leave those down in the comments section below. Also, just a reminder, I have increased my probing frequency. I'm doing this twice a month now, and in the second episode each month, I'm going to be doing mail time as well. So if you want to send me anything, you can send it right there to P.O. Box 4325, Diamond Bar, California. That's listed in the video description on all my videos, too. So, so send me some stuff if you've got some stuff to spare. And with that said, let's get into the first question, which is from, from Tired here. Sorry you're so tired. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate your apology. That's from last episode, by the way. The question here is, what are your favorite fans or coolers? And any regrets? That's buying fans or coolers. For the sake of time, I'm going to focus on the fans part of your question rather than coolers. In either case, of course, Noctua is often a go-to. They make really good uh, air coolers and they make really good fans as well. And Noctua is often all you'll hear people talk about when it comes to fans and coolers. And for good reason. They, they make really good products. This is the NF-A12X25 Flex Edition. And these are really, really good fans for a variety of use cases. And they come in a variety of different flavors as well, depending on how they're going to be connected in PWM, non-PWM, different uh, rotational speed ranges and stuff like that. So by all means, get yourself Noctua fans. They do a great job. But uh, to give you something different, just a different recommendation, I'm going to show you this. This is a Gentle Typhoon. They're made by Nidec Servo Corporation. And you might notice actually some, some kind of some similarities between these two. If you look at the swooped fan blade design, and these have been around much longer than these. The Gentle Typhoon is kind of an old standby in the PC building world, and I, I, I feel like they were like Scythe did distribution for them at some point. But the point here is, even though they don't have some of the fancier features of some of the other fans, like this only uses voltage control, it is not PWM. It does not have rubber feet or attachment points or anything like that. No RGB to be spoken of at all on this fan, but what it does have is a really solid, quiet motor, a really good fan blade design that applies a lot of static pressure, which makes these uh, really good to use on top of radiators. This, along with a couple others I originally got for the original Arctic Panther build back there. So I've had these for quite some time. This is the D1225C1, which I believe is the lower RPM, like 1200 uh, RPM version of this, which is also why it uses very little amperage, 0 0.083 amps for this. Also a low power usage fan, which is which is kind of nice too. By comparison, the Noctua A12X25 uses 0.14 amps. And that's another thing that's not often talked about when you're comparing different fans to each other. Better fan motors require less power to run them because they run more smoothly. And if you have a cheap fan, you might look at the amperage on it and it'll be like 0.5 or something like that, which is kind of absurd in terms of power draw for a fan. All right, and I was curious, so I just popped this up on Amazon. Uh, so we've, it actually does come in a, in a PWM version for about $24. 1850. Okay, never mind. I have the 1850. D1225C12B5AP-15. Yes, this is the exact model that I have, and it's only $20. And then they also have a 1450 RPM model as well. And both of these use three pin voltage control, and then there's a four pin PWM1 that costs a few bucks more. And all of those are less expensive than the NF-A12X25, at least the one that's being recommended by Amazon there. So something to consider. So maybe consider the Gentle Typhoon if you're building a setup and you want to upgrade your fans from the cheapo $5 to $10 fan versions. That's one thing I really notice when you install really nice fans in a system. It just sounds so much nicer, so much cleaner. You don't get any of the rattling or the spin up and, or spin down noise that uh, you might encounter. So that's why these are good fans. And that's also why they cost a bit more at around $20 each. And if you're looking for something a little bit broader than these recommendations, uh, check out hydro bearing fans. These are not hydro bearing, they're double ball bearing, but hydro bearing fans also they're typically going to be a little bit more expensive, but they'll also be a little bit nicer and a little bit quieter. Let's move on to the next question. And actually, before I, I, I actually answer this question, I did want to show that in the last episode, there were so many comments from so many people, and I'm not going to scroll through all these, but just, there were so many comments of people just like, providing encouraging words and all the various different things that people said. So I wanted to say thank you to all of you for saying all those positive, very nice things in the last episode's comments. But also, 
it kind of made it hard to find actual questions amongst all the positive feedback. So, and that's not to say you shouldn't be putting nice comments for me in the comment section. I really do enjoy them. I'm just saying I did kind of have to dig a little bit for today to find the right questions to answer. So these are about future projects and specifically some series that I have done on the channel that uh, I haven't updated in quite a while. So just general vlogs where I'm kind of going around and doing different things. HTPC and home upgrades are also stuff. Uh, 24FN and Warren also were asking about garage, house, garden, work logs. It is absolutely bonkers to me that it's been well over a year since I did this last video on the HTPC. There's Hana. She's like more than a year older now that she was, look how cute she was back then. But there you can kind of see the HTPC. It's mounted to a big piece of wood. And this is actually something that has been on my mind because I, I replaced it. I stuck it back because most recently it has been replaced over here in the corner of our living room. And that's where it has been sitting ever since for more than a year. And at this point, I am, I'm actually kind of getting a little over the piece of wood. I, I hope that's not too horrible of a thing to say. It's a little bit cumbersome to carry around. The piece of wood is a cool piece of wood. It's a piece of walnut. It's stained up really nicely and it has a nice sort of design on it. But I'm mounting a computer to it and it's, it's not the most practical thing, I'll be perfectly honest. So the HTPC is something I've been looking at, staring at and thinking, what should I do with that? Should I cut the wood and make it smaller? Should I just ditch the wood entirely? I think I got a little too stuck and fixed on the piece of wood that I found. And then beyond that, uh, some, some of the practicality went out the window for it. So I've been thinking about getting like a thermal take, uh, the P P1 case or the, the wall mounted ones that have the glass panel and just moving everything to that. So it's a little bit smaller and I can move it around a little bit more out there until we get things set up with the shelves and whatnot that I want to put in. But more broadly than that, you're asking about the HTPC, our backyard, all of these projects that I've had sort of on the to-do list for quite some time, and I haven't moved forward with them very much. And part of the reason for that is my new schedule that I've put together, which is kind of the best way that I've been able to wedge three videos a week into my schedule otherwise, because my schedule otherwise includes uh, taking care of my family. That's always priority number one. Number two is taking care of my video production and making sure I get those out. And I'm sure food and water and that sort of thing works into this list as well somewhere. But number three, I will say, is like all of these other bigger projects that I've sort of had on the to-do list for a long time. And I haven't really been able to move forward with them because my schedule right now is that on Monday, like today, I shoot a video like this one that I can get done on Monday. During the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, is when I have time to work on bigger projects. And then on Friday is when I typically shoot tech news. However, my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, over the past month or two has been very much taken up by some graphics cards launching from NVIDIA and then the water cool PC that I was assembling over the course of three weeks or so uh, as a giveaway for the charity live stream that Kyle and I did back in June. The charity event is over for now though and I'm going to be getting those prizes shipped out this week and then I've been saying no to like everything else. Vendors keep being like hey we got a product do you want to do a video on it? Do you want to do like a video on this or that? And I'm like no I don't want to do any videos. I don't want to make any commitments right now because I want to get to work on these other projects and I'm finally feeling like okay I've got some time to do that. I've got the calendar freed up. So that is probably what you guys are gonna be seeing from me over the course of the next few weeks is some more work. Maybe not necessarily on the HTPC, but I really need to do some work on the garage setup out here, get some stuff cleaned up. I have a lot of hardware from projects that I've done that I need to also find better homes for. So working on all that stuff, it just uh, takes time. But uh, I will be taking you guys along for the ride, I promise. So at the very least, in the next week or so, you should be seeing a vlog type thing where I ship those prizes out and do a little bit more on getting prepared for some of these big projects to get underway. Next question here from Joshua Keys. Hey, Joshua. Joshua's been a long time viewer. Thanks for uh, stopping by and saying hello. What happened to Hotbox 2.0? And do you and Mrs. Hardware still play games together? So this is Hotbox 2.0, and this was built in September 2016, or at least that's when I kind of completed it. It was a mini ITX water cool PC with this like pastel orange coolant in it because my wife likes orange and I've built her a few different orange PCs over the years. Look how pretty it was, look how beautiful it was. And then like three plus years later in 2019, I went and did another video on it where I disappointed a lot of people by taking it apart. I, I, it's, it, I left this fluid in here for way too long. It got a little darker, but it wasn't actually that, that horrible, horrible. But I basically drained the whole thing, gutted it, and I removed most of the custom water-cooled setup for it. And this is it right here. It ended up with an RTX 2080 Ti in it, I think, was what I put in there, and a Cooler Master all-in-one liquid cooler. So this became a very functional system, and my wife has been using it ever since. 
So I guess I should apologize to anyone who was hoping that I would sort of reassemble the, the loop in that build because I never actually went through with that. And it doesn't look nearly as cool as it did originally, but like I said, it's been functional and working ever since I did that rebuild. So for now, my wife doesn't really need a new PC, but I'm thinking about doing a new one for her. I got a new mini ITX case that recently just arrived, so maybe, maybe might work on something like that. The funny thing is though, she hasn't even really been gaming on that PC very much. That PC is in the office. She has been using this PC, or at least the more recent version of this PC, and I rebuilt this yet again to use for the live stream, the charity live stream that I did with Kyle. So now it has a 5800X CPU in it, and it had an RTX 3080 Ti, but I actually popped that out, and it now has an RTX 3080 Founders Edition in it too. And that's what she's been playing on out in the living room because that's where the 240 hertz monitor is. She's been playing a good amount of Overwatch, and she actually kind of kicks ass at that. Um, since I set up the system to do the live stream, I went and loaded up OBS, so I've been trying to like go on there and set OBS to record as she's playing and maybe I'll get an accumulation of her gameplay and her kicking butt and do a montage of that at some point. But going back to my answer about the HTPC and everything, that is another project that I want to get going is setting up the living room to live stream off of the HTPC or the new version of the HTPC because what we want to do together is play World of Warcraft Burning Crusade because we used to play that together back when we were first dating and we'd like to do it again but we'd like to live stream it at the same time. So that's another project that I'm, I'm totally gonna get done. Like right, right as, as soon as I finish recording this video, I'm sure. Razzlast asks, with it being much easier to implement, do you think modders will start putting FSR into games officially? This is actually one that I talked about uh, in the tech news uh, from this past weekend, this past Sunday. So check that out if you haven't watched it. But uh, there was a modder named uh, Folger uh, he's actually a developer, and he in, uh, he added FSR to uh, VR, to Steam VR games, or a lot of Steam VR games, and it actually worked out pretty well. So uh, that's part of the reason I wanted to answer your question, is yes, I think AMD has done the right thing with how FSR works and how it is implemented, because we're seeing a bunch of just like mods really quick, or just people being like, hey, I took FSR, I spent like a day or two days working on it, and now it's functional in this game. Maybe not quite optimized or that kind of thing, but I'm pretty sure that's what AMD wanted and how they went about designing FSR is to make it easy to implement wherever necessary. But I think yes is the answer to your question, and for games that don't have the developers going and adding it directly, I think we'll see a lot of fan-made mods that allow you to turn FSR on in games, even if the developer's not supporting it directly. Next question from Jim Anderson. Paul, I always enjoy your videos, you have flawless delivery. Thank you, Jim. And I, I, I disagree with you, but I've realized because of your question that I, that, uh, <laughs> but I realized because of your question that we make extensive use of editing technology here at Paul's Hardware. No stutters, ums, or other misfires. Do you use a teleprompter or other technique to deliver such a flawless yet candid performance? So Jim, when I'm recording videos like this, this video is unscripted. I usually sit, and I'll, I'll like think about what I'm gonna say for a second, and then I'll spend, and I'll think about what I'm gonna say for a second, and then I'll spend like three or four, at, <laughs> see I'm doing it right now. I'll, I'll think about what I'm gonna say for a second, and then I'll give it like three or four different tries to try to actually say it without stumbling over my words or something like that. Occasionally I can go for, you know, a paragraph or two without actually pausing or saying um or something like that. I haven't done what Jay did. Jay actually told me at some point about him on his rides to work. He would work on not saying um or not using those filler words that you use when your mind is just at a loss for what word to say next for a second. I have not worked on that. This could also be the result of us like not live streaming for quite a while because when I live stream, I, I have lots of pauses and other things like that. So Jim, I'm glad you appreciate it. Joe, who's my editor, thank you for making me sound like I know what I'm talking about a lot of the time and cutting out all of those pauses and everything because apparently it helps. Jim appreciates it, so we'll keep it up. Oh, but I forgot to talk about teleprompters. Yes, I use a teleprompter for the tech news videos and uh, any of the longer videos, like if I do a GPU review or something like that, I like to write it all up so I know what I'm gonna talk about. And I haven't shown this in quite a while as, as well, but this is uh, a relic from when I started my YouTube channel a long time ago. This is my homemade teleprompter, which I still use to this day. It's just a piece of glass and a cardboard box and some black duct tape. And uh, there's, a, there's a coat hanger in there as well to give it a little bit more structural support and rigidity. I pop that on top of a monitor that connects up to a laptop and then I have some software on the laptop that runs 
that does my teleprompter. And then I have a keyboard that goes down underneath and I, and I press the space bar with my toe to advance the teleprompter or to stop it. I realize saying that right now that it might be a little weird to people, the, the configuration that I have set up, but I'm so used to it that it just seems normal to me. But that's, that's how I do my words and my talky bits. Thank you, Jim. Anand Silas asks, out of curiosity, what is the one item you take from your desk? that always returns. He, he loves my setup. He shares space with his daughter and it's very similar to mine. So this is one of my garage work logs from back in 2015. Um, and yeah, this is my desk that I built uh, out of some Ikea countertops. And it's still the desk that I use, although I've done a bunch of other stuff. I've added some sound dampening and I've painted and stuff like that. But it has been a great setup. It provides lots of desk space. And then my problem is that I end up with like all this. I just have stuff piled out on, ev on it everywhere. But to answer your question, and I'm kind of taking liberties with how you've uh, phrased it there, but the thing that I most appreciate on my desk is nothing. <laughs> I most appreciate when there's just sp space and when I've actually taken the time after finishing a project to go and put stuff away. That's the thing that I most often like at a loss for with my desk and between my work table over here and my desk here, I will often take a big pile of stuff from here and move it to the work table so I can shoot a video right here or vice versa, bringing that stuff back here. So space, free space is what I need more of and that is hopefully what I'll have more of once I have a little bit more time to work on cleaning stuff up. Ernest Lee Dunbar asks, how's the family doing? And when was the last time you and the family had a heartfelt moment? Keep up the good work, really glad you're doing great things. Thank you very much, Ernest. And I would say family is the one thing that I would, I've would i most appreciated. This is one of those kind of more deeper and more heartfelt questions, but I'm glad you asked it, Ernest, because family has been increasingly more important to me. It's always been very important to me, but I've really been appreciating it, uh, especially over the past six months. We had to spend a lot of last year separated, social distancing. It really messed with our childcare arrangements and just having family to look after Hana on certain days of the week. But since the vaccines have rolled out here in the US, we've been able to spend a lot more family time. Uh, my sister, who was watching Hana a lot back in 2019, has been watching her again. And that's been really helpful because she has two young boys. Uh, Hana doesn't have any siblings, so her spending more time with the boys has been really helpful. And as far as heartfelt moments, well, uh, like Hana's two. So it vacillates wildly between these moments where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go insane because she's two years old and doing two year old things. And then these moments where she just comes up and says, I love you daddy, or like wants to hug us, or she just wants to like come up and hug you for no reason, or like she's really nice to the dogs for a minute because she's not, well, Hero she's generally nice to, Nori she kind of trolls from time to time. But uh, yeah, the heartfelt family moments have been uh, coming in rapid succession. And I'm really happy that we've been able to spend more time with the rest of my family as well. That's been one of the big, big, bumps up in, uh, in, in overall approval of 2021 versus 2020 is the ability to do all that. Just a couple more questions. These are a bunch of comments from the last one where I said Socrates because uh, I was, I forget what I was talking about Socrates. I did a quote from Socrates and everyone, quite a few people in the comments are like, uh, it's Socrates. And then uh, some smart people like, like this guy right here realized it's a Bill and Ted reference. Uh, and some other people followed up right there. So, so that's, that's a good one. That was a Bill and Ted reference. My intro, is Bill and Ted, so I couldn't really say Socrates. Or, or, you can't really say Socrates when you're a Bill and Ted fan. You gotta say Socrates. And the final question, uh, this isn't a question, but uh, since the last Probing Paul theme was everyone is wrong, I wanna point out that I was also wrong, as pointed out by Ewan Thompson, because I said I would put a link to the giveaways that we were doing for our charity live stream down in the video's description, and I, I never followed up and did that. It's too late now, the charities have ended, the winners have been picked, and they've confirmed their prizes, so I just wanted to say I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. But hey, if you guys have any questions for me to answer in the next episode, where we'll also be doing mail time, put those down in the comment section down below. And again, my PO box for mail time is listed down in the video's description. So if you wanna send me something through the snail mails, uh, you can do that. I'm sure there's all manner of things that you guys might think of to send over, but I'm curious and we will find out soon. But that's all for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button on your way out. That's always helpful. Uh, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon and everything if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future. And and uh, oh yeah, my store. If you'd like to help support the channel, go to paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and uh, oh, my, my new coasters like this one right here. They're really nice, really nice bamboo coasters. Thanks again for watching you guys and we'll see you in the next video.